Uh, it's my first time in front of the camera for you know, it's been a few days and uh, there's one thing I'd like to start with which is for me very important is uh, someone's been very nice with me and uh, I'd like to thank that person uh, it's Randy Richard he has the channel called uh, Randy Richard in the shop and uh, he did to me one of you know I think it's a very very praised uh, favor that <laughs> if you do that to someone it's because you trust someone and it's because uh, I think you probably feel that someone deserves it so I'm proud to deserve his trust and his referrals and uh, so people don't know Randy he's uh, having a very nice channel he's a very creative person I learned a few tricks from uh, his doings in he's very active very energetic and uh, admire that person. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's I gotta admit, he's, uh, I look up, I look up to, uh, to this person. And so, thanks again, and uh, I wish one day I have the chance to do uh, to others, to just pass it along to other uh, deserving people on the, uh, on, on the channels, so, you know, like, just a little, uh, little help like that will, you know, will help someone going along and uh, I think it's just you don't lose you just if you if you give a referral like that you don't lose your person your people uh, coming to your site they stay to your site and they got another site to go and uh, another channel to go visit and uh, you know learn from and uh, gain from so I think it's a win-win game and uh, thanks again and let's go with the project uh, I think uh, we got a few uh, a few issues to resolve and uh, I think some viewers are anxious to see how it turns out, and me too. Okay, uh, now uh, lots of you wanted to know how I was going to pull up the uh, chuck business with the <laughs> few goofs that happened to it. Uh, now we're there. Uh, I don't know the end, didn't write it, I made a few plans, but uh, I guess the plans can change uh, along the way, but uh, I'm planning to do some welding, replace the uh, missing metal with uh, well, and uh, the method I chose for that was uh, I'm gonna MIG weld because uh, a few you know I, you know like a few considerations on that I could take weld, but I'm gonna MIG weld for the uh, main reason is that you can apply very high burst of energy with MIG and uh, cools down quick and for as far as affecting um, the, uh, the, the, the zone around you know the uh, heat affected the, the, what they call that has they call it the heat affected zone uh, it will be minimal I will just go with small bursts hot enough I'm gonna put a backing behind so the uh, the metal don't just shoot around the hole and uh, with that I'm pretty sure we'll be able to uh, achieve a pretty good result and maybe a little bit of cleaning job after but it's going to be uh, like minimal and I'm just uh, crossing my fingers there's not going to be any uh, warping or deformation of the, uh, the, ca the, uh, the, 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 the chuck itself one thing I did I cleaned up very 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 thoroughly uh, it needs to be clean. No, uh, no lint, no grease, mostly grease, no water. Uh, so after that, we're setting up, and uh, we'll uh, install ourselves, and I'll go along with you and uh, hope for the best. Okay, I was anticipating maybe a few questions about, oh, what, what kind of machine you got, or uh, what equipment you got to weld this. So this is it. It's a Lincoln 350 MP. Uh, it's a MIG machine. It can also be used as a TIG machine and also can be used as a stick machine. It's, uh, it's got three modes in there. But uh, I used it only for, uh, for MIG stuff. It's a 350 amps machine. It's able to control a spool gun. Can weld pulse. Uh, different kinds of uh, you know it's got lots of features on it which I don't use all the time because I'm kind of used to uh, 
hand features and things like that. So, but uh, it's a very nice machine. I've had it for uh, I don't know four or five years now, and uh, I wouldn't change it for uh, cheapos. I well, with cheapos they go fairly good, but they're not as sturdy as this though. And uh, I'll give you a close up of it. It's got uh, separate control for uh, amperage. It's got separate control for uh, wi uh, wire speed, and they're pretty accurate. Also, uh, you got setting modes for aluminum, for different kinds of steel, for uh, like I said, stick welding, take welding, and. Uh, just like a like it's a pretty versatile machine. I got I, I've got a separate TIG machine, which uh, when I need to TIG, I don't have to uh, do and undo a setup. Okay, I'll show you now. Just um, we're pretty close, so I'll show you now what what the setup is for the uh, the plate itself. Now, see, I mounted the plate in a vise. I insulated the vise from the table with the uh, just a board. It's just holding with the big clamp and uh, if we go close enough from the uh, mess I did that's what it looks like the copper colored part in the front is not a piece of car in the in the bottom sorry it's not a piece of cardboard it's a little piece of copper it's been holding there with the, this plier and it's going to be used as a backup for a uh, Let's say so that the uh, the welds don't go any further than that. Copper is reputed. Repu sorry, this copper is reputed for uh, pulling away the heat. It's just, it just conducts the heat about uh, around ten times faster than it could uh, do steel, and it's about f at least five times faster than aluminum. And uh, on that, you know, while we're at it, stainless steel is kind of much slower than steel itself so uh, just just gives you an, uh, an idea of uh, why we use copper for uh, you know like backups or things I just gonna go in the back sorry for the movement though it's pretty simple I'm grounded on the uh, piece of copper what I did I just took a piece of a uh, plumbing pipe three quarters of an inch flattened up one end and kind of a uh, Inserted it there, and I clean, cleaned up a little bit the end that was going to the uh, the, the hole itself. Okay, now I'm gonna go uh, a few practice shots, and uh, we'll get at it. Okay, now we're installed for uh, a little test run. Not exactly comfortable, but uh, that's just to uh, get an idea of uh, how it welds and uh, what, how much power I got and. Uh, see just uh, how it reacts so I'll give it a little shot and we'll discuss the results okay that's uh, as close as I can get uh, sides of the weld not too bad slightly rounded but that's going to be hot enough to uh, stick to the parent metal and I'm, I'm going to be going by short bursts so they that will induce the minimal heat and give the uh, maximum deposit and the uh, copper backup will get uh, rid of the heat you know, pretty uh, pretty fast I'm gonna try to get the better view but uh, I'm gonna try to let you see at the same time so Let's go for a little try and we don't want to put tons of it we just need to put enough to make uh, like, a, like a, a little bit more than tin sheet metal only going short bursts on the copper, the copper will probably deform a little bit, but uh,
Okay. Now I'll have to move you because you're a little bit in my viewing angle. far so good. Let that cool a little bit. And uh, yeah, you see pretty good. I'll put you in front. So it's, yeah, I'll have to do some removal, but the hole is like totally covered. I didn't open up the sides wider than it already was and uh, it's like I say beside a little bit of removal will be uh, will be pretty good and it's like with this heat input is kind of minimized to uh, it's it the best the best we can do so I'll let that cool and I'll show you uh, the two other ones Okay, it's been about, I don't know, maybe 10-15 seconds. I'll just put you back uh, back there. Uh, just want to show you something. See, if I touch there, I can put my hand there. See this? Even the, the weld itself, after maybe 15-20 seconds at the most, is cold enough for me to put my finger right on it and um, I'll do it I'll do it on the next you'll see it in real time in the next uh, on the next well so uh, I know I shut the camera off and uh, maybe you can make you uh, try to make you believe something but uh, it's like the, the copper is pretty efficient to pull off the heat let's try one of those uh, gears see if uh, Okay, so we don't have, see it has to go a little, very, very little bit deeper, but not much, so see, we're not, see it's about the normal position, so we don't worry too much about uh, having uh, hogged the place, and there's not going to be uh, much uh, metal removal in this, so that's what I'm I was counting on and what's uh, make what makes me happy too so let's uh, I'll just get set up for the uh, the other um, the other places and I'll be back soon okay we had a winning combination the first time so just did the same setup same exacting the conditions about the same and then we go for uh, another uh, just this side again I'll, I'll I'll have to move you uh, just after I do the first uh, the first half of it because I I'm absolutely not uh, comfortable doing the second half with the camera in the way so but uh, let me do the first half and then we go for uh, the second half right after let's go Okay, now I'll move you. Give me a second. It's gonna, it's gonna shake a little bit. Okay, second half now. That's about it. I told you I was gonna touch it uh, soon after. This 
part. Touchable, touchable, touchable. There you go. There you go. This is real time. Just try the uh, little copper pipe in the back. This one, <laughs> the copper pipe is too hot to touch. It's not. Not, not, it's not going to cook my skin, but it's going to burn. But the chuck itself, the heat got pumped away, which is exactly what I intended for. This gear is setting in. It's not going to even need, uh, I'll probably just clean it up, it doesn't need any machining on this. So, so the second one is done. Yeah. For those of you who were wondering what would happen in the back after those two first um, welds, see, there's a little bit of copper left right there. It's only normal because like it will stick a little bit to it, but the uh, copper was mostly used to as a backup, so it wouldn't. Uh, it's like the, the would, I would get a ne decent surface in the back. It helps shielding the um, the well with the argon that won't go too far, and also uh, mo mostly the, the the purpose of copper was to pull out the heat as fast as possible. This is the second one. I'll I'll do the first one. See, there's a little bit left there too. Just a little band of copper. Uh, my plan with this is just probably put this in the four jaw, align it and give it a little uh, a little boring and I think we should be pretty well on our way to reassemble the chuck because I cleaned everything up uh, it's just almost waiting for uh, the few holes in the back plate and uh, we're, we're almost there going for the uh, third uh, third hole now was uh, going good for the first ones and we're uh, exactly going to proceed the same way Try to do it without moving you, but I'll be a little bit in front of you. Ah, that wasn't as comfortable, and it's and it's showing on the weld. <laughs> Welding is one thing; you have to be uh, comfortable. You have to see your arc and. Uh, just uh, position is just a very important thing in the uh, in the process but this seems pretty nice too so we'll uh, keep it at that and like shown on the previous uh, take see it's I don't know how many seconds but it's not very long touching the uh, metal around. Don't worry, I'm really applying my hands on it. This is the weld itself. It's hot a little bit, but not burning hot. And the uh, copper part, I'm not touching it. Just, that's where the heat went. Let's try the gear. See uh, how it behaves. It's uh, pretty, uh, pretty what it needs to be. There's going to be a little bit of uh, metal removing. It's going to be a little bit in the back, cleaning it up. But everything around is going to be sealed. No more uh, junk coming in the uh, in the chuck. I think that's uh, that part of the job is done. 
I'll just dismount, put the welding stuff away, and uh, we'll be soon going to something else. Maybe just before we um, we quit on the uh, on this, I'll show you a few things. See, I'm welding, and uh, no safety uh, safety talk gloves. These are uh, heavy, heavy thick gloves. They're not, uh, they're not meant for, you know, heavy, heavy making and things like that. But give me more dexterity. That's a smaller job, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, this is a leather coat. I could have worn like a cotton shirt or something like that. Then uh, the leather is the best because the uh, sparks will bounce off the leather and the. They won't go through to your skin right away. And MIG is a pretty dirty process for that. It just uh, sends lots of uh, particles on and they're hot. And also uh, stick welding is the worst. But MIG, uh, you, you, can, uh, you have little, uh, little BBs just going around. And uh, what I was wearing before, for uh, the machining, these synthetic stuff you never wear that for welding or anything that would involve heat and fire this material will stick to your skin while burning and really peel off the skin at the same time so never do that cotton will burn but it won't stick to the skin it will just make ashes but this melts so you do whatever and uh, sandals not recommended shoes with uh, plastics not recommended because drops will go around right your feet and believe me I tried it before so leather shoes closed shoes no plastics on the top no things like that this uh, it's my safety advice let's say uh, I'm not a safety Nazi because sometimes I take chances but there are things that burns, things that hurts, and uh, I know a few of them, and uh, I just want to let you know that uh, if you don't want to experience them by yourself, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe this advice can be, uh, I don't know, you do whatever. Okay, maybe uh, one little thing about welding, maybe while we're at it. Uh, this is my regulator, and the... The argon uh, and CO2 mix. I, I use 75, uh, 75, 80, uh, uh, 25, sorry, 75 percent argon and 25 percent uh, carbon dioxide. There's one thing that uh, I don't know if, who knows and who doesn't know, but uh, who, who wants to know. Uh, when you open up the valves on the bottles there, uh, when you rent bottles and things like that, you want to open the valve when you open it up you open it totally because uh, get there get there right at the end tie it up a little bit because the pressure in these uh, in these balls is over three ta uh, 2,000 pounds like uh, like this one I don't know if you see but uh, it's about 2,000 pounds uh, the that's the red uh, red scale on it so it's a few, it's a new bottle, so it's about uh, 2,000 and, uh, you know, maybe 50, I don't know. Uh, not that important. But the thing about the valve is when you just crack it open, uh, the seals in there might be good, it might not leak, but if you open it totally, there's another seat. These are two seated valves, so that the, the, the uh, bottom seat will close the bottle when you want to have the... Um, ball totally closed and when you open it up the top seal will close it on the uh, top side so there's no leak along the uh, the shaft there where you know this shaft there that goes into the bottle it, because it will seat up there allowing the gas to go there and when you close it down it will seal down there allow it, not allowing the gas to come into the valve or any 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 of those mechanisms and whenever you finish with the job uh, turn it off. It's very important because you kind of lose the uh, the mix you got in your bottle uh, on the longer run because there's always just it rarely 
you rarely don't have a, a, a leak on the uh, on a system like that and if you want to check a leak you use uh, soapy water on the uh, you know this connection there connection there connection there connection there and then the welder and everything but you always tend to lose a little bit so uh, that's a important thing and also get the ventilated area because argon and co2 you can't breathe that it's not poison but they will just uh, choke you it will just like uh, it's not air you need oxygen and it just like uh, it will uh, it will replace oxygen so uh, just a few little pointers and uh, welding and things like that here just a short session of grinder I won't bore you with a long session of that just um, cleaning up the weld and uh, making room inside for the uh, gears That's perfect fit. Can't ask any better than that. This is not critical up until this place there. So this side here has to be cleaned up. A few, few little BBs, but nothing drastic with that. And uh, I'll do the other sides, and uh, it will come to a nice. Uh, I'll show you closer. This is how it looks like few reflections but uh, this is clean enough I'll do the other sides off camera I don't think you need to hear a grinder for uh, 15 10 minutes or something now we're uh, getting closer to the final uh, Final steps to make this uh, plate working. Um, it's where the welds have been performed. You see one weld there, one there, the other one there. It's going to be interrupted cut for a little while. And uh, I'm going to take it very, very easily because I don't want this to. Uh, get off the chuck. It's uh, gonna be ringing like a little bit on the bell side so uh, when we get closer to the uh, finished cut I'll see what uh, could be done about it. If I can just leave it like that or uh, retake it but uh, so far we're going with this setup and uh, we see where it leads us. Turning about 300 RPMs. And, uh, I'm going to take manual cuts because it's, can I say, interrupted cuts, going easy. bell sound I'm going not much more than 50,000 at the time and uh, maybe uh, 50 to 60,000 I'm not really reading the dial or the DRO, I'm just going by a uh, feeling.
sincerely hope we're not gonna go uh, and see another hole appearing. space and uh